Deus Ex Invisible War short video game review. You are Alex D. Gender chosen by yourself and ethnicity also somewhat. There are six different choices. A recent graduate of the Tarsus Academy and an excellent agent prime for biomodification so everyone wants you to do something for them. And right from the start there are two different factions to choose from and throughout the game Basically, you get to choose, am I going to help one or am I going to help the other? Those two factions are the WTO, this World Government and Military Organization, which the other side claims is corrupt, and the Order, a religious faith that strives to combine all the old religious faiths into one. They got guts, and they are said to be dangerous by the WTO. Your, your choices very much have consequences long throughout the rest of the game, and you do have a fair amount of freedom as well. Not as much freedom as the first, and this streamlines a bit, which makes the world seem smaller and it simultaneously give you, gives you too much freedom in that you right from the start have a ton of different choices that you can basically make at any point in the game in the biomodification because the moment you have one biomod you have 10 different to choose from there are 15 total and in you know on the other side of the scale the there are only five of them that you can choose you know where in the first one there were nine biomodifications you could choose to run around with and 18 to choices total the game has a lot of different sort of tactical opportunities and whether you want to sneak or go in guns blazing, the game will support you in doing so. Pretty much every location you go to where you have some objectives, there are guards patrolling or standing guard, there are cameras and sometimes turrets that tend to be activated by either the cameras or alarms set off by the guards, and sometimes there are robots as well, so you can choose to sneak past all that, or try to face it head on, or an entirely third option. The bio modifications especially help you, you know, do very different things, and it really does matter which one you choose and whether or not you upgrade it. The third level of upgrading, which is the top one, tends to have a new sort of benefit to the other two levels. The game has a really good plot and a number of very surprising plot twists, although it does... It shoots itself some in the foot by being a tribute to the first one, which, you know, very much a continuation of the first one. It's really not newcomer friendly, and it... There... The, the characters are not seen and interacted with enough. You kind of forget several of the characters, in the time that you are away from them, even though, you know, they do come back every so often. But yeah, you know, too long goes without. And it's also a little too devoid of sort of outstanding missions, sort of set pieces that really, you know, stay in your memory. Near the end, you do get more of those, as well as finally some interesting locations, but it's a bit too little too late. Graphics have improved since the first one, but not by that much, and movements and eyes are still kind of awkward, and, well, the eyes are all dead, and designs tend not to be terribly interesting, but the voice acting is pretty good. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.